today we have been invited to tour Chateau Cheval Blanc. Cheval Blanc was awarded the highest Appalachian quality ranking of Santa Million Grand Cru Classe in 1954. We're lucky enough to have Arno, the commercial director at Cheval Blanc, guiding us around this beautiful chateau. So what are your predictions for the 2022 vintage? Mm. It's just been put in the barrel, so we still need a lot of time to completely understand this vintage. But what we know for sure, it was the driest, one of the warmest, and one of the most early vintages we never, we ever came across. In the, even in the archives of Cheval Blanc, we never picked the Merlot in the month of August in 2022. Not only did we start on August, but we picked half of our Merlot within the month of August. The particularity of 2022 is that it was dry since the winter, as opposed to, for example, 2003, which was dry and hot, but with a rainy and, and, and mild uh, spring. So the vines in 2003 started to grow, grow their leaves vigorously, and then, boom, they take a big hit of drought and, and sunshine, as opposed to 2022, where the vines never had any water. So they started the small and the long way because they knew that the vintage uh, was going to be difficult, was likely to be difficult and demanding for them. As a result of that, uh, we are in uh, the late uh, months of November now, and we just saw in the vines that the leaves are still on. They never lost their leaves. The vines were keeping their leaves and hence keeping the bunch in the shadow. And that makes the beauty of 2022. It's pretty velvety, very aromatic, very easy to accept and to uh, uh, appreciate. The wine is fresh, the wine is balanced, and it's full of juiciness and, and pretty smiling wine. I propose that we taste two very different vintages. 2016 and 2011. So in 2016, we got a relatively wet spring, which is classical in Bordeaux, and then very, very dry summer until the harvest, but without too much heat. And so as a result, the vintage developed a, 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 a big concentration, pretty lot, a good lot of tannins, but all in elegance and aromatically, it's, a, it's a pretty fresh, and uh, very, very balanced. So it's a vintage that we love a lot. It's not ready for being drunk at the table, it's a bit young, as opposed to 11, but um, it's very likely to be one of the vintages that can age for 50 years more. Easy. That is delicious. 2011 is a, uh, is a dry year, but we had some rain in the finish in the late August and beginning of September. So as a, as a consequence, it's a vintage with more efforts to provide. 2016 was, I can't say it was hard to produce. 2011 required much more dedication, particularly on the sorting, because there was a, a, a bit more uh, rot pressure than on 16. But let's not forget that if you have the means and the tools and the people and the know-how to sort such a vintage, it only has an influence on the quantity you produce and not on the taste, because no single rotten berry enters any vat. It's out. The 2011 was exquisite, and although the 2016 is still young, a vintage of this quality will last long into the 2060s. Thank you.